Understanding how words were formed in Chinese script gives further insight into the ancestral roots of the people. This is illustrated by setting it against the backdrop of the Bible, an ancient book written by the Jews 3,000 years ago. The Jewish people lived in the Middle East with no external contact outside that region until the 17th century. This meant that the Chinese and the Jews would have no knowledge of each other prior to that time. Yet writings and records of both cultures point to a similar history. First, the question about the origin of man. Where did man come from? Chuang Tzu, the Taoist thinker writes, In the beginning of all things, there was a void. There was nothing that could be named. Similarly, the Bible starts with Moses writing the account of how, in the beginning, the earth was without form and void. Dong Zhong Shu, another Taoist thinker, writes, This origin is like the source. Its significance lies in its permeation of heaven and the earth from the beginning to the end. Parallel to this is the Jewish prophet John's writing about God as the origin and the source of matter and time. I am the Alpha and the Omega. I am the beginning and the end. Starting from the writings of Moses and Genesis, the history of mankind can be followed by setting Chinese characters and the biblical account side by side. The Bible reads, And the Lord God formed men of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. The Chinese word to create is formed by the word speak, dust, life, and walk. As God spoke to the dust, the dust received the life and was able to walk. Then he placed the first person, Adam, into the garden and blessed him. In Genesis it says, The Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. But Adam was lonely, so God formed woman out of one of Adam's ribs and called her Eve. In the garden there were two special trees, the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. God forbade Adam and Eve to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and warned of the death if they disobeyed. We see this in the ancient Chinese word for restraint, which is made up of a mouth and a tree. However, the devil disguised himself as a snake and tempted Eve. He persuaded her to think that she would not die if she ate the fruit, and that her eyes would be opened to see the things the way God did, knowing both good and evil. Eve then started to covet the tree's fruit. The Chinese word for covet, desire, or greed is formed with two trees and a woman. When Eve ate the fruit and gave it to Adam, this brought death to them as written in the Bible. They could no longer live forever in God's presence. The word for put to death comprises of his words which warned them that if they partook of the forbidden tree, their life would return to dust from which they were taken. According to the Bible, Adam and Eve were driven out of the garden after they had sinned and began to multiply the earth. Evil increased with mankind, and God decided that they needed to be destroyed. One man, however, found favor in God's eyes and was spared. Before God struck the earth with a great flood, He instructed Noah to build an ark, large enough to shelter a pair of each living creature as well as his family of eight, himself, his wife, his three sons, and three daughters-in-law. The Chinese word for boat comprises of the word vessel with eight mouths in it, symbolizing eight people. The word flood is made from the words eight, united, and earth, forming the word total and water. After the flood, Noah set up an altar and offered burnt offerings to God. For thousands of years during their new year, the Chinese have also set up an altar with burnt offerings to the God of Heaven. This practice is still very much alive today. Once the flood receded, people began populating the earth, and after a period of time, they gathered at the plains of Shinar and began building a tower to reach the heavens. At that time, everyone spoke just one language. The word tower in Chinese is made up of the words grass, clay, 
one mouth and mankind. This agrees with the Bible when it says, Now the whole earth had one language and one speech. And it came to pass, as they journeyed from the east, that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. Then they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They had brick for stone, and they had asphalt for mortar. And they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city, and a tower whose top is in the heavens. Let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the whole earth. God was against what they were doing, and came down to confuse their language. There was then a great division of languages, followed by the mass migration of mankind to different parts of the earth. The Chinese character for migrate, consisting of the words great, division, west, and walk, encapsulates what happened and indicates where the Chinese went. From the great division in the west, they walked. It was reported by China Central TV that Professor Jin Li, the top Chinese geneticist, discovered through his DNA research that the Chinese actually originated from the African continent. This is consistent with the biblical account of the Great Division. Yet, even before the migration of the different races, God has started a plan to save mankind from death, the penalty of sin. In the meantime, a man by the name of Abraham living in the Middle East, was called by God to leave his family in the place called Ur. God commanded Abraham to go to the land where he would show to him and promised that he would be a great nation. Genesis chapter 12 verses 1 to 3 Now the Lord had said to Abraham, Get out of your country, from your family and from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. It was a promise to Abraham that through him and the generations after him, he would bring the blessings of eternal life back to mankind. The nation of Israel was a result of the ancient promise by God to one man. Forty-two generations after Abraham, Jesus was born. Jesus was the Son of God who was sent 2,000 years ago to bring redemption to the whole world. Jesus lived for only 33 years, but during the last three years of his life, he healed the sick, gave sight to the blind, cast out demons, and even raised the dead. Jesus taught his disciples about the kingdom of God and about how to live rightly. He commanded them to teach and tell the world about the good news of redemption. He was eventually crucified by the people for teaching the truth about God. But on the third day after he died, he rose from the dead as proof of his deity and as an act of redemption of our souls. He then gave specific instructions to his disciples to spread this good news, that Jesus became the sacrificial lamb that was slain, and the offering of his innocent blood to God would pay for our sins. The Chinese word for sacrificial animal is formed with the word ox and lamb, combined with the word sword and unblemish. This reflects a sacrifice to God by the Chinese, as well as Jesus as the sacrificial lamb that was sinless and unblemished. The next word righteousness is even more intriguing. A lamb above the word me, which is made up of hand and spear, speaks of how Jesus, the righteousness of God, who became the sacrificial lamb for us, was pierced for our transgressions. Just as sin was brought into the world by a fallen man, redemption was brought into the world by a righteous one. And now, that redemption is being offered to all Chinese through the acceptance of Jesus as the one who was sent by Shang Di, the God of Heaven, to reconcile us back to Him. The same God may have actually been recognized by the Chinese before the Jews and other races in the West. Confucius spoke of a supreme creator in many of his writings. The Book of Otis states, How vast is Shang Di, the ruler of men below? In the Analects, he ascribed not to his own goodness, but credited it to heaven who produced the virtue in him. Lao Tzu, in the Tao Te Ching, 
wrote about an unknown god and referred to him as the Tao, or the Way. I do not know his name. Name him Tao. For a lack of better word, I call him Almighty. I do not know whose son he is. He is before any king. In John chapter 14 verse 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. In all history, Jesus was the only person who claimed he was the way. Another remarkable saying by Lao Tzu is that the Tao exists as one, one exists as two, two exists as three, and the three created everything. What was Lao Tzu trying to describe? Without the Bible, the Chinese cannot interpret this fully. In 1 John chapter 5, verse 7, it reads, For there are three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word or Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. Were the wise men of China preparing the people to understand their God as the Trinity of Heaven, the three-tiered altar of sacrifice at the Temple of Heaven in Beijing seems to suggest just that. This pattern of three is repeated in the number of gates that stand around the altar, the temple surrounding tiers, and the Temple of Heaven itself. In this manner, Shangdi has been honored in the past by Empress of China, and still is being honored in many homes and businesses owned by the Chinese. This is why there can always be found tree cups and tree joysticks on the altars, with burnt offerings every new year, so that the God of Heaven may be worshipped and remembered.